Party people, Tony Rowe here. We have game four. It's been completed. Uh, first of all, two shout outs. You guys might notice that my video today does not look like crap, like it usually does. And that's because my buddy Dan. Uh, I am deeply uh, indebted to him. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think he honestly just got sick of my videos looking like crap. And so he made me an overlay. Uh, <laughs> and the, the second shout out is to Nikki Riga. Her picture is up there. Her Instagram is down here. She's the photographer on site for uh, FIDE, and she is immensely talented. Um, she has actually given me uh, permission to use her pictures, and so I am using them because they are better than the pictures I could find otherwise by a lot. So thank you, guys. Uh, let's get to game four. And uh, I don't know why I started on move two. But I did. Uh, and a as I guessed in my last video, if you watched my last video about the, the openings uh, in games one through three, uh, Magnus Carlsen has exhibited a uh, habit in his last couple matches to almost like stick and move as white uh, or probe his opponent's defenses like the Raptors in Jurassic Park. You know, he's just trying to find like, OK, where's a weakness? And uh unsurprisingly like it's easy almost in a match to just try and draw as black and try and win as white and most people bunker down as black and they have like one opening that they just choose against e4 and they're just going to play it over and over again carlson's done it with the sveshnikov or th this match he's obviously doing it with the marshall things that are sharp are usually better and so i think he's trying to stretch nepo's defenses by playing all the white moves like let's see where he let's see what he's got against all these things let's make him work every round to prep against every white move um but we'll see how it works today was a petrov warp um the russian played the russian no okay uh okay so e4 e5 knight f3 knight f6 this is like the highest level version of like that a-hole kid in chess club who's like i'm gonna just copy you every move and see what happens like when you're 12 um it's like the anything you can do, I can do slightly worse variation. Um, and like, I think most people know that knight e4 is a mistake here. You're supposed to kick the knight with d6 first and then knight f3. Now knight takes e4. Um, but actually, you know, not to be snarky, but most commentators just go like, ah, yeah, this and then queen e2. And, but actually, like, it's sort of hard to prove that this move is not good. Um, just as an example, queen e7. Queen e4, d6, exploiting the pin. Ooh, dang it. Uh, d4, just accepting that you're losing the knight but winning the, the the pawn. Now knight c6. And like if you play the most obvious move here, which is bishop b5, actually bishop d7 is not clear at all. Um, for instance, knight c3. And black is not threatening queen e5 because if bishop takes c6, removing the defender, and if queen e4, bishop takes e4, winning a piece. And uh, like this move... Um, I'd guess probably this move and then knight d5, for instance, would just be crushing. So a after castles long, though, I think black actually is threatening to play like knight e5 because now knight d5 can be met with queen to e6 because there's no fork on c7. And after bishop f4, either like queen b4 or even this g5 move are both like pretty playable, surprisingly. Um, so if we go back, just in case you guys are worried about the, refu <laughs> the reputation of this line, it's better to go knight c3 right away. And then after queen e5, uh, you have this annoying knight b5 move immediately. Um, but even here, after bishop b4 check, white needs to be careful to not go here and then here, which is, again, not that clear. Um, you should go here. And then after takes, takes, this really sad king d8 is forced. And then after rook e1, I think white's much better. Just one idea. But anyway. D4. Uh, D4 is, like, back in vogue. It used to be that... Uh, Knight c3 was just like the move for a long time. And then after knight takes c3, white white opts for development. And either bishop e3 or bishop f4, like bishop e7, bishop e3, bishop f4, followed by queen d2 castles used to be like the way you, you tried to pressure the Petrov. And honestly, like consistent with Carlson's stick and move, if he even goes e4 again, I expect Nepo, given that Nepo's just been like hammering the same main lines this whole this whole match so far, I would expect that Nepo would play the Petrov again, and that Carlsen would go into this knight c3 line. Um, we'll see. So d4, d5. 
And uh, already you can kind of see the flavor of the Petrov. Like, it's a completely symmetrical pawn structure, equal space in the center. The only thing White has as an advantage is the fact that it's his move. So he's got a half tempo. And also, like, there's this subtle play around the fact that I think White tries to prove that the knight on e4 is actually, like, worse than if it was on f6. Because it's a little unstable on this square, and it's a little, like, too far advanced too soon. Like, you can imagine it, it would be somewhat odd if Black went knight f6 to e4 super early in the opening, but that's what happened, right? Because of the, this exchange on e4. Um, you, you typically wouldn't move your knight twice in the opening like this and put it on this far advanced square because it's just not supported. So I think white like bishop d3, you'll see c4, rook e1 later, queen c2 and some variations. So white tries to build up against this knight, build up all this tension, so black has to like unfavorably release it somehow. And we'll see a little bit of that in the game, but... Nepo goes bishop d6. Um, historically, knight c6 has been the main move for a long, long time. A uh, long, long time. And then, like, I think in the... I think it was Caruana's match with Magnus. He started playing this bishop d6 move, which was, like, a sideline at the time. And now this is, like, burst into probably being the main line of the Petrov. Um, castles, castles, c4, very natural. Again, like, starting to chip away. d takes c4, bishop e4 would be unfortunate. Uh, black bolsters the central pawn, and then white goes rook e1. So, and th there are a lot of moves here, actually. Um, I think queen c2, knight c3, rook e1, and c takes c takes d5 are all possible choices here. And it's interesting that Carlson chose rook e1. Again, if... if uh, I want orange. Which one is orange? There we go. Nailed it. Um... It wouldn't shock me again if Carlson played e4 to like for him to try another move of here if he had another idea, but it's it's the Petrov. It's super hard. Uh, Bishop f5. Again, there's like this theme of playing around this knight, and then white. So common in any structure like this. This almost looks like a Slav when Black brings out the bishop in like a lot of d4, d5, c4 openings. Uh, when Black brings out this light square bishop, white puts the queen on b3. Both building up the tension against d5 and also tickling uh, on b7. And here, Nepo goes queen d7. Uh, instructive, in a way, is queen b6, because this is, in many times, the thematic response. In this specific case, because of like the geometry of everything that's going on, queen c2 is very strong. Uh, when there's like a lot of pressure against this constellation, like there's this pin here, so the knight can't really move, and there's this threat of c4, c5. So... If black were to go queen c7, let's say, um, white could go knight c3, and black's losing a pawn. He, if he protects it, white just takes a bunch of times, and if he goes here, actually, this is completely lost after this, because uh, there's actually no square for the, <laughs> the knight to retreat to anymore. Okay, um, it is possible after queen b3 for black to go knight a6, um, because after queen takes b7 there's this really nasty knight b4 move. Hitting the bishop, if the bishop moves, there's knight c2 perhaps, and also there's like this lingering threat of just moving the queen and playing rook f to b8. Rook a to b8, a7 would hang, is like a little, mercy, a little murky, but white actually cannot extract the queen. There's no, there's no square. As long as this knight doesn't budge, there's no square to move, so black actually has two, time for two moves to go queen f6, rook f to b8. Um, after knight a6, instead white has typically gone here, and then there's this line that goes kind of like this, where black plays d takes c4 and b5 to carve out this like artificial outpost on uh, on d5. So you could expect something like knight c6 or knight c7, uh, maybe bishop e6, and then knight d5. And uh, th this is, might be slightly better for white. It's hard for black to keep this outpost for too long because a4 starts chipping away at the queen side, but it's an interesting variation. I think it's playable. But Nepo goes very solid, main line, queen d7, knight c3, and uh, the pressure is too much. Takes, bishop takes f5. Um, white could go queen c3 here, but like I think bishop, okay, for instance, I'm just, I didn't have this plan, but I would guess something like this is just. Probably slightly better for black, even. What does the evaluation say? Yeah, maybe a tiny bit. Um, with reduced material, like, uh, there's less dynamism in the position, and so I think white would be less 
interested in accepting an isolated pawn, something just very simple like this would be just very solid for black. So after, after knight takes c3, this is pretty much forced, forced, and then white takes this way. Um, to to possibly play c takes d5 and c4 again, or just taking towards the center and opening up the b file is probably more um, dynamic. It is interesting in this position, white can go here, and quite a few games have seen this. And after knight e4, queen takes a8, queen d8, another variation where uh, a queen doesn't make it out alive. This threat of knight a6 is very dangerous. This is sort of the only move, going planning to go knight a6, uh, queen c6. And after c takes d5, of course, this is not possible because a bishop takes h2 check, dirty. Uh, the only move, actually, to not lose is this one. But even after this move, like, of course, this would be uh, very winning for, for white, probably, up two pawns. And so black goes here, still same threat. And after queen takes f8, pretty much forced. King takes f8, rook e2, it's kind of a mess. Um, but I think it's probably playable for both sides, just maybe not that interesting. Okay, so b takes c3, black protects against the threat of b7, takes, takes, and uh, yeah, so probably shouldn't have highlighted all this. Oh my god, okay, well, I'll leave it. Oh my god, what's yellow? Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, so we have this position where white has both a backward pawn along the c file on c3 and also this weak c4 square, and if he does nothing, it's actually pretty easy for... Black to go knight c6 to a5 with tempo and then hop this knight into c4 and probably white might even be slightly worse at that point. Um, and so white sort of needs to find a move here to interrupt that plan and the main move it's been played in. Uh, there have been 40 games to reach this position and it's been played in 38 of them. You can tell like how advanced chess is now like at least at the high level queen b5 like who would find this move like over the board by yourself. I don't know, it's a, it's a very non-intuitive move to me anyway, but stopping uh, knight c6 or, or uh, incidentally also stopping knight d7. Knight d7 here runs into queen c6 when this bishop is shockingly short on squares. Um, bishop f4, bishop takes f4, queen takes f4, queen d7 would, would hang the knight. And the only other possibility is bishop b8. And even here, tricky trappy, queen takes a8, which looks like the point, loses to bishop takes h2. So white flicks this move in first, threatening to just take here, after which queen a8 would be winning, because there'd be no discovery anymore with the rook. And after rook d8, uh, bishop e7 is winning. So ugh. knight knight d7 is not possible. And instead, Nepo goes queen d7. Again, there's this looming tactic. And taking here would be kind of lazy. White goes a4, much stronger move, leaving the tension. Again, watch my video two or three videos ago about tension. Um, because the point is, is like taking here would help black develop a piece, but white reasons that now taking here, which happened in the game incidentally, helps white. Um, reconnecting his pawns into one pawn island, exposing uh, the this backward pawn along the a-file, etc. Um quite a bit stronger than retreating the queen or or taking on d7. And now black probably plays the best move here. There have only been a couple games to reach this position, I think. Um, and in three out of the four, yeah, black has immediately gone a5, which I think is prudent. You can imagine if like a move like knight d7, now a5 is or a6, like ridding black of this weak pawn along the a-file is going to be much harder. But right now, taking off a song, black can take with the rook or the knight, and it's okay. And indeed, a couple of games have gone B takes A6, Knight takes A6, Knight A3, and um, after Black goes B5, very solid, very hard to, to break down. And of course, if if White tries to get too frisky with this rook like B4 down the line, just completely yields dead equality. But uh, yeah, that this was Christo uh, Matenin versus Andrew Leonard in 2021, so pretty recent games in this variation. But here's... Both players actually had used like almost no time to get to this point. So we're on move 17. Carlson's about to play his, his 18th and Carlson had used six and a half minutes and Nepo had used like 12. Okay. Um, and Carlson plays this novelty knight H4, never been played, um, quite strong. And the immediate threat is just very simple. Knight, knight F5. And actually they're, knight F5 would just be winning. If it was, if it was white's turn, knight F5 would be winning because 
you can't protect the knight or you can't protect the bishop because something like knight f5, rook d8, knight takes f5, rook takes, uh, knight takes d6, rook takes d6, rook e8 would be mate. And you also can't, after knight f5, go bishop c7 because of at the, at the very least, there's knight e7 check takes d5 and you're hitting the bishop again. And you're attacking this weak pawn on b6. So that would be a blowout as well. Um, Black very wisely just goes g6. And again, very quick, Carlson plays g4. And uh, you, you sort of need to, like, bo both knight h4, especially after g6, when you're like, what the hell is the knight doing on uh, h4 now? And g4 need a little bit of explanation. Long term, what White would really like to do is go, like, if he could just transport his knight, for instance, to here, he'd be you know, winning. There's no way to protect this thing, especially because black only has a dark squared bishop. This pawn on, on the light squares is actually quite weak, ironically. Um, but, and it, it takes a couple moves for, for black to organize some defense of that pawn, right? So long-term, white could even go like, you know, black's going to put a rook on the C file, white could go bishop D2, maneuver the knight to E3, uh, and, and take this pawn. The, the problem is, is, like on on some level, Black's gonna go knight f6 to protect it, and you need you're gonna need this bishop to kind of unseat this knight. And if you need the bishop, then the c3 pawn's weak. So then you start going, okay, like I need to go king d3. I bought a new mouse. It's oh, it won't let me do that. Okay, I need to go king d3. Bishop e2 in the in the short term. Bishop d2 in the short term, and then king d3. So that at, once I put my knight on e3, I can go bishop g5, lop off the knight, take on d5, and I'm winning. So something like that. So knight h4 is kind of the first step of that. Um, but then you realize maybe, like you could go g3, and go knight g2 to e3. It's not as good. You can go g4. And that way, he, the bishop can stay on d2, for instance, if you if you still want to play the same long plan. And after knight f6, you have g5 to budge the knight uh, when, uh, when you're just much more efficient. You don't need this like long king walk to, to like protect the c3 square. Uh, and after g4, Karawan on the, the chess.com broadcast was, was quoted simply beautiful stuff. <laughs> a man of few words. This is a guy, Karawan, who has a lot of experience in analyzing these positions. He's never seen knight h4, obviously never seen g4 after that, but... Um, so the game continued knight d7. Rook c8 is also possible. Um, but uh, yeah, knight, G7, knight d7, knight g2, and now rook f to c8. It, it's also possible to go like here, which is reasonable. But it, it's also interesting to stop and compare how the differences between g4 and g3 actually play out like in a, in a real game. So like after g3, knight d7, knight g2, same plan. Um, black can go knight f6, and there's already kind of a problem. Like, uh, if knight e3, then probably just rook f to e8, and this pin is kind of uncomfortable. <clears throat> and if bishop h6, then rook f to c8, and on knight e3, which is kind of relatively similar to some variations we'll see later, with the pawn on g4 after rook c3 there's no g4 g5 to budge this knight like usually you'd be able to go g5 when the knight moves you'd be able to take on d5 and it'd be about equal the only way to budge the knight is here but then knight e4 actually hits the bishop so you can kind of see how the bishop is not as good at budging this knight in general um yeah so after knight g2 Well, you can also start with bishop h6, but after rook c8, um, g4. Uh, taking here, obviously, no good because of rook e8. So black goes knight d7. And then after knight g2, you're actually just too slow now. Rook c3, uh, knight e3, and then like rook d3. And if takes here, then you just take on d4. But uh, if you go back to the game, g4, knight d7, uh, knight g to e2. If, if black goes knight f6 now, there's bishop h6, rook f to c8, knight e3, same variation, rook c3, g5, 
And now if knight e4, actually you're just losing because rook e4 and knight c3 are both uh, on, the, on the, the menu there. So after knight d7, knight takes d5 uh, relatively, relatively equal, somewhat similar to what we see in the game. Okay, so just running it back, knight h4, g6, g4, knight d7, knight g2, and uh, Nepomnishi goes rook c8 here instead, rook f to c8. And if knight e3 here, then rook c3, knight d5, rook b3, and, and uh, white's in some trouble because b5 is hanging. So instead, Carlson goes uh, bishop f4, best move, I think pretty clear. And the game kind of goes along this long forcing line, bishop f4, knight takes f4, rook to c3, knight takes d5, rook d3. Rook e7, budging this knight, hitting the seventh rank. Uh, knight to f8 is the only move, like a move like rook d8 would lose to knight d7, then knight f6 check, knight takes d7. That would be unfortunate. Um, yeah, and then Carlson plays knight f6 check. And he can actually already take a draw. King g7 uh, is the only move. King h8, rook f7 would be very bad. So king g8, only move, knight e8 check. Um, I think king h8 here is actually possible, but king g8. And then Carlson, I think, thought for a long time, like this. He thought for a while on this move, and then I believe he thought for, for a while again about d5. Uh, presumably whether or not he should just take the draw immediately or try and, try and press. Um, yeah, and, and actually the game here kind of fizzled out pretty quickly. King g7, g5. Again, like, it starts to look like, even way from way back when, finally this, this pawn uh, on the A file starts to become very scary relative to White's D pawn, which is <laughs> his pass pawn. And so I think Carlson kind of played like d5, g5, maybe using up his time analyzing see if there are any tricky traps and when he didn't see anything he just decided to take the draw here so like the game ended knight e8 king g8 knight f6 king g7 knight e8 whatever but um but even here there are some cute ideas like uh for instance like instead of here you can go king g2 i think hard to explain this move but i think like when you're talking about promotions happening along the back rank it's like useful that they're not check so it's just like kind of a helpful way to move a2 d6 if rook d6 then knight e8 check would would win the rook or win an exchange it would force rook e8 so that's no good and if if uh just as an example of some of the cute things like that could happen uh if like a waiting move like rook d4 just useful rook a to e1 and now if a1 equals queen rook takes f7 actually is winning um, if king f7, of course, this is just mate and one, very pretty mate. And if king h8, which would be forced, then rook takes a1, rook takes a1, rook takes f8, king here is, you know, rook freaking wherever, rook b8 uh, is winning for, for white. I don't think black can stop, stop this. Very beautiful. The, the problem is, of course, is like after like rook a to e1, almost most logical moves even like rook d6 here, I think is is drawing for black, but there's also just knight e6, and it looks like okay, maybe this move, but after this, there's no mate anymore because the knight on f8 is in the way. So like after this, there's king f8. There is a pretty draw here with this, but uh, that's it. So yeah, uh, an interesting game all around. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And even though it was a Petrov, I think there were some pretty things and so there were some instructive ideas in there. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I would expect, again, Carlson to continue to to kind of probe. I, I wouldn't expect him to play into this exact same Petrov line again. And he has another white in the next two games. Um, and I would expect that as white, next round... Nepo, I'm going to guess, is maybe going to play e4, but maybe not a Roy Lopez. Or maybe a Roy Lopez sideline that's not going into an anti-marshal. I think it's pretty clear at this point that if Carlson's chosen the anti-marshal, or the marshal, that 
it's going to be very hard to beat his preparation in such a solid and respected opening. Same way it's hard to beat the preparation in the Petrov. I mean, I would not expect Carlson to go into this main line Petrov again. Maybe the the line with knight c3 and d take c3. But uh, again, I think Carlson has the right strategy to kind of hunker down his black and play these like easily analyzable uh super main line well respected openings is black and just try and draw very easily as black and and probe and push is white so we'll see but i hope you guys enjoyed it uh thanks again to nikki and dan and thanks again to all of you guys for watching tony Rowe. out of here <laughs>